The objective today is to describe what a cloud is and why it's useful. Here's your table of contents. We have Azure's definition, then I'll go over what clouds can do, the whole globalness of the idea of a cloud. Uh, I'll talk about delivery methods, aka deployment models, versus service methods, or we could call them service models. After that, a couple warnings of the, about the cloud. And then let's talk about what makes a cloud so special, what uh, providers there are of cloud computing. And then I'll just kind of uh, leave it at that for today, try to make my videos a little shorter. Um, there will be many other cloud videos uh, coming in the future here. So Azure says that the cloud is a metaphor to describe a global network of servers, each with a unique function. So this is a network of networks in that sense. If a server is what you need to have a network because your computer talks to the server and we have a global network of servers, that's all it is. They go on to say that it's a vast network of remote servers around the globe which are hooked together and meant to operate as a single ecosystem. So that kind of really helps me wrap my mind around the difference between a cloud and just a network. And you can see here in my little bottle, uh, they have an ecosystem in there, maybe. Um, but see how it's chained to another ecosystem. So in that sense, you put two ecosystems together and you'll have a single, single ecosystem. And that's the same thing with networking here. You put uh, networks together to create bigger networks. And I don't know if you're aware, that's where the name internet came from, an inter- uh, network of networks of computers and servers. These servers are designed to either store and manage data, run applications, deliver content, or a service such as streaming videos uh, using email, office productivity software, or social media. Pretty sure many of you out there can name streaming uh, video streaming services. Um, email is nothing new to a lot of you. But this whole word cloud kind of seems new, depending on your age. Um, this might be a new word that kind of popped up recently, even though uh, the concept behind it has been used for a while. And as you can see, cloud computing, um, here are those um, delivery methods I mentioned before. You can have a private one, a public one, a hybrid one. There's another one called a community cloud. And then the services that these um, clouds offer could be anywhere from just offering uh, multiple servers for whatever, uh, storage, like video storage there, uh, mobile stuff, <laughs> so your applications, well, there's applications. I, I wonder what mobile services they're referring to in this picture. And then let's jump to database. You could talk about like having a database of your clients um, out there on the cloud, and that might be useful. <laughs> it might be very useful depending on what company you are. So you should write down what types of services you can access in the cloud. And I just want to emphasize the distinguishing factor is a global network here. So as long as you have an, uh, as long as you have internet access, you should be able to access these servers uh, with these types of services. So the whole idea of redundancy and on demand are really big. Okay, so there are methods of delivery and there are services. Uh, what types of services can you see in this cloud? And what they like to do is say things like software as a service to describe these types of services. Uh, then you have this whole idea of platform as a service. So there's that database example we talked about before. And then you have like an entire infrastructure as a service. So this type of cloud is for uh, people to use. This type of cloud exists for people to build from. And then this is a type of cloud that you would migrate to. So according to Azure's website, businesses use four different methods to deploy cloud resources. There's a public cloud that shares resources and offers services to the public over the internet. A lot of times these are totally free or this whole freemium idea. Um, they might be showing you ads or something. You have a private cloud. Um, this isn't shared, offers, offers services over a private internal network, typically hosted on premises. Um, that, that's a tricky way to end there, but let's go ahead and write down um, the first two methods. That's pretty easy, public and private. 
The next is a hybrid cloud that shares services between public and private clouds. And then you have a community cloud here, and that shares resources only between organizations. We might be talking about governments or universities or other institutions. Nice big map here uh, looking kind of like the internet, maybe with the white dots as examples of um, home bases for a cloud, or we could call these edge servers, maybe. Uh, the point is there are four types of clouds, and it's interesting to think about these uh, being a worldwide thing. So here's Wikipedia's take on the cloud. It says, on-demand availability of computer system resources, especially data storage and computing power. Then they go on to say, without direct active management by the user. I just know that large clouds are predominant today. They often have functions distributed over multiple locations, real key right there, and they're distributed from central servers. So the big reason I wanted to give you all these words really is for these last few words. They have central servers. And if the connection to the user is relatively close, it may be designated as an edge server. And that's a funny thing about how the internet works. Just because uh, one server may be closer to you doesn't necessarily mean that's the one that you're using to get whatever the thing is that you're looking for. Whether it's content or maybe access to um, the database your company has been building on customers. All right, so here's that picture again. It says companies want to make use of clouds to minimize upfront IT infrastructure costs. Proponents also claim that cloud computing allows enterprises to get their applications up and running faster. And this is helpful if you want to just you just started a company and you wanted to get going right away and you didn't want to spend a lot of money on uh, computers or hard drives or, or you know upgrade those computers with uh, more of whatever ram hard drive maybe a fancier processor but you don't have to spend all that money you could just um, use the cloud so i'm thinking you can infer a problem with this right away if I tell you the answer now, you won't go watch my uh, cloud security video, which will be up shortly after this one. I can tell you, though, that cloud providers typically use a pay-as-you-go model, and this can lead to unexpected operating expenses. Um, if administrators are not familiar with the, the pricing models that's being used, so I'll give you that one right away. You could find yourself spending a lot more money than you ever intended if um, you don't ma make the right selections. But of course that's tricky because if you uh, spend more, um, you might be making more, so it might be not a problem at all. Let me say that the drawbacks sure are nerve-wracking, um, especially the ones I'm like alluding to earlier, especially when I mentioned the word security and cloud in the same sentence. But overall, cloud computing is pretty cool because you're going to waste a lot less. We should be able to uh, manufacture less computers because of it, or at least uh, save some money because uh, those computers are efficiently being used in the cloud versus what we can all imagine um, inefficient uses of, of computers are. And if the saving the planet, hippie, uh, going green excuse doesn't um, convince you to get into the cloud, um, I found a cloud architect job that start, started at $109,000. I'm sure they need a person with a big networking background, but it, it looks like a pretty good job to have. They're paying a lot. And this also tells me that there are experts um, behind the scenes making sure this whole efficiency idea is being used so you know better for the planet um, using less computers using less computers in general and um, the reason for that is this the main enabling technology for cloud computing is virtualization and virtualization software separates a physical computing device into one or more virtual devices so you see how we can have one physical computer that is actually behaving as if it's uh, 10 other computers I use a VM on this computer to do um, a lot of things, but when you put that um, in perspective of a giant network, this is a really good thing. Why? Because idle computing resources can be allocated and used more efficient, efficiently. Makes me think of that whole quote, uh, poor people can't afford to be cheap. If we spend a lot of money on server grade hardware and that hardware does not go idle and is used to its max, 
then we're being a lot more efficient about the things we do. Now, if you don't know much about virtualization, I can't explain it here. I do have several videos on it. Um, one thing it does to me, though, is it always seems to break my brain. It's kind of um, hard to, to visualize, at least. How about that? It's hard to visualize virtualization as a tongue twister. But the point is, this concept, this tool, we can call it, is pretty um, genius. All right, so uh, let's just go through a couple pictures here. I'd like you to name one you don't know. We have several names here that probably pop out to you, but what is a company you don't know? How about this one? Why don't you tell me a company name you don't know over here? Unless you know them all, then you're a genius. Good job. How about this? Do you love bar graphs as much as I do? I found that infrastructure as a service slash public cloud providers, such as VMware, Azure, IBM, these providers are being used, and this is a breakout of world regions, okay? So the total globe, North America, uh, we got Asia Pacific region, Latin America here. Um, so here's the breakout, and if these numbers don't quite add up to your mind, you might just consider some organizations or companies use more than one cloud provider to do different types of tasks. So that's always a thing. Well, as we wrap this video up, uh, go ahead and how about this one? Name one that's going to be easy for you to remember. For me, this question is pretty unique because you're um, probably seeing a lot of names that you don't recognize. So however you want to answer that one, that's not a, a big deal. Here's your summary. The on-demand idea is an essential thing to cloud computing. Virtualization is essential. Redundancy is, you guessed it, <laughs> essential. And what the cloud is, is it's just simply a metaphor. So your DOL demonstration of learning, go ahead and tell me what is um, the cloud, however you want to answer that. So hope this clarified what the term cloud means, and thank you for watching.